These five Procreate tips will take your digital art game to the next level. What is good everyone? Today we're gonna to look at five tips and tricks which I use every single day in Procreate and which you need to start using straight away if you wanna level up in this fantastic app. Let's waste no time and jump straight in. And the first one we're gonna look at today is making sure we have the Procreate widget set up. Now this is probably a bit of a hidden one and not everyone is gonna know this one exists, but this is super useful for anyone who does use Procreate all the time. Let's have a look at exactly what it is, how it works and how we can set it up. First of all, this is what it looks like when we're on our home screen here. We have our Procreate widget sitting there ready to go. And the best part about this, it shows us our most recent Procreate artwork we were working on, gives us a preview of it. And then if we tap on it, it takes us straight into that artwork. Imagine that workflow. You open up the iPad, you've been working on a project for a client and you wanna jump straight into it and you can just go bang straight there and we're in. It's super easy, fast, reliable, and it really has been a game changer for me. Let's have a look at setting it up. All we have to do is press and hold on the background and then we're gonna get a little plus icon in the top left-hand corner. We're gonna hit that plus and then on the left here, we've got a few options and we just have to make sure we find Procreate in the list. And then we have our options here. We can choose from the small square, the more rectangle version in the landscape mirror. We've got a bigger square and then we've got the largest rectangle version, the one I'm currently using. All we have to do is hit add widget and it's gonna jump onto our home screen and look like this. This is a really good one, it's basic, but if you use iPad every single day like I do, promise me you'll go set this up straight away and let me know in the comments if you already use this one or you do start using it after this video because it is awesome. All right, jumping straight along to tip number two today, and that is when we have our brush selected here, whichever brush it is, it doesn't really matter. My absolute favorite is Studio Pen for when I'm outlining. When we have our brush selected, we're gonna be working with outlining on the piece, but we're gonna save our brush sizes. Now this is a really, really important one and this can really take your art level to the next game. I'll show you what I mean. If I start outlining this piece here and I'm jumping between different widths of my outline, I'm gonna forget what those are very, very quickly. On the left here, when we are selecting our brush size, you might see I've already got a few little dashes here. These are my saved brush sizes and I can tap on those for quick reference. So the first one is at eight, the lowest one is at three and the middle one is at 5%. Now this is great because I always have my canvases in A3 size. So by tapping on these, I can always utilize those brush sizes very, very quickly and get a real good consistency through all of my artwork. And the best news is they're very, very simple to set up. All we have to do is find the brush size we want. Let's say I wanted to have a 1% brush saved there for those really super fine details. When it's on that, I can tap again on that selection handle there and you'll see a little plus icon appear. As soon as I hit that, we're good to go. And this will max out at four. We can only do up to four of these on each brush, but I'd argue that four is more than enough when it comes to this sort of feature that we're using. Tip and or trick number three today is when we're in our gallery view and we can see all of our artwork here, we're never gonna delete or remove any of our old artwork. Now this is gonna sound a bit strange at first, but trust me, the amount of artwork I've created from old pieces, which I never thought would turn into anything, but I've saved them has been absolutely key. And I'll show you what I mean. So I've got this stack down here and it has 128 different pieces of artwork in it. Now these are pieces that I've never really done anything with. Maybe some of them did turn into something, but they've just been ideas, sketches, maybe they have been finalized pieces, but they're things that I just didn't really want to work on at the time, like some old logos, all that sort of stuff. It's a bit of a graveyard really, but this is great because I can go back to this. Maybe it's this angle of a skull and yeah, it's not the best skull I've ever drawn, but in the future, maybe I come back to that and I go, I love that angle. The tip here is to never get rid of your old art and to create a stack so you can keep it there and you can just look back on it from time to time because you never know what you might create. I've probably had 10 pieces in the last year which I've created, which have come from that stack alone. I'd given up originally, but I never deleted it because the way the artistic mind works, sometimes we need a bit of space and we need to create other things and then come back to what we've done in the past and go, you know what, I can actually use that now. So let's not delete that artwork and let's create a stack. Tip number four today is to change the way you use color palettes. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. We're gonna go up and we're gonna tap on our color wheel in the corner there. Now this is the way that everyone is probably familiar with their color palettes. And these are great, we can create new ones. We've got so many options down the bottom, but when we are on the palettes view here and we have the color palette selected that we wanna use, the tip today is to make sure we turn on cards here at the top. Now this was a really big game changer for me when it did come to using color palettes in Procreate and it allowed me to look at my colors in a very different way. Let's have a look at that again really quickly. If I go back to compact, these are very small, you know, really, really small colors there. By looking at them, I'm probably not getting the true representation of each of those colors. So by tapping on cards, I get a much bigger view there and it's a really nice way to look at them. And I can still scroll through all of my other color palettes as well. So tip number four is to make sure we have cards selected when we're in our palettes menu. 
This one really took my color game to the next level and I promise it will do the same for you. And tip number five today is how to insert a private photo into your artwork. I'll show you exactly what this is and why you might wanna start doing this in your artwork. Now, if you're like me, you do a lot of your sketches on plain old pencil and paper, which is a fantastic way to start your designs. But there is that moment where you do want to bring things in digitally and work on them. And when it comes to that, we can do things like take a photo or scan that piece of art in. But we also want to get that artwork into Procreate and maybe want to create a really nice time lapse of that, but not have that initial sketch show underneath. So again, we've already done that hard work of sketching that design, but maybe you want a really nice time lapse of the line work going over the top of it. I'll show you how to set this up and why it's really, really cool. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the little wrench icon, the actions menu here, and we're not gonna tap on insert a photo. We're gonna swipe from right to left on it. We're gonna see a little menu appear that says insert a private photo. And now we're gonna tap on that. It's gonna open up our gallery here and we can go ahead and select something. Cool, so it's inserted the image, but this image is a little bit different, it's a little bit special. Let's have a look at what's going on in our layers menu now. If we open it up, we can see that it's set to private. Now this has to be done this way for this method to work and I'll show you what I mean. Let's drop the opacity on this one. We're gonna go and grab a sketch brush. Then we're gonna create a new layer over the top. And then we're just gonna start sketching over the top of it. That's not the best thing I've ever drawn, but hey, for the purpose of this, you're gonna see exactly what I mean. Now we're gonna go up and we're gonna tap on our actions tab again. We're gonna go across to video. And then we're going to tap on time lapse replay and watch what happens to that original image. It's not there. Now, if you are intending to share this and claim this as your own art, I'm going to suggest you only do this on your own artwork. Otherwise, this is technically another form of plagiarism. But the way I utilize this is for sketches that I've already done and I want to bring them in digital. But I do want to have a really nice clean time lapse there without that sketch underneath. So it was my own art and I'm just trying to tidy things up and make it look really nice for when I do want to share that online. Those are this week's five tips in Procreate, which you have to start using straight away because I promise you, you will level up really, really fast in this fantastic app. So get out there and give them a go. If you like today's video, hit that subscribe button down below. It doesn't cost you a cent. And please consider joining up to the membership part of my YouTube channel because it'll help me bring you these videos each and every week and support me as an artist. Apart from that, I appreciate every single one of you. Get out there, give these a go. And until the next video, I'll catch you then.